A retrospective look at Nigeria's business sector in 2022 shows a mix of too ugly and not too good. As experts say, with the forthcoming election and change of government bid for this year, the sector would likely stagnate. A rewind of 2022 and how the nation's business sector fed pictures a period marred by inflation, high unemployment rate, poverty, insecurity, unfavorable foreign exchange regime, narrow depreciation against other currencies, high energy costs, slow growth domestic product growth, fuel scarcity, flooding, oil theft, conundrum, high interest rate, soaring public debt, and the narrow redesigned policy with its attendance implications. On Business Insights for this week, we will be doing an economic outlook for Nigeria this year. Welcome on board. I am Justin Akadonye. Welcome back. It's still Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. We'll go straight to the discussion for the day. We have Gospel Obele, uh, an economist I'm standing by. Many thanks for joining us, uh, Gospel. All right, uh, Gospel, let me just start by asking a general question based on what we went through in 2022. Uh, if you were to just summarize or just uh, predict as it were, do you see Nigerians smiling? Before we get into the business of the day, do you see this year as a better year? Well, it depends on um, where you're looking at it from. Um, this year is a, a year that um, comes with a lot of mixed narrative. Hmm. Um, on some levels, it will be a better year. On some other levels, it's really going to be a more uncertain year. Um, I won't really say it's going to be a bad year, but it's really going to be a more uncertain year. But on some other levels, yeah, it's going to be very positive and a very good one. Again, dependent on who is looking, hmm. what you're looking, and how you're seeking to engage and interpret change leadership, you know, as a critical pathway to understanding uncertainty and approaching uncertainty mm. with the necessary intelligence around market to un to unlock and and, and uh, maximize opportunities as as they come. Yeah. All right, uh, Gospel. The president uh, just recently, days ago, signed the 2023 appropriation bill into law. I want to just ask a question right now. The finance bill was not actually signed. In my head, I'm thinking that uh, we are projecting revenues and incomes and all of that. Does it really make sense uh, not really having um, uh, defined uh, financial law or finance law as we are even talking about uh, how much we are going to be making this year? Finance bill law, you get well, um, I would say it's the developing story. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a developing story also because um, it, there are a lot of um, considerations that went into this budget. Let's not forget that the supplementary budget was presented in December. Uh, and, and, and this is still the fresh of the start of a new year, taking into consideration as well elections around the, the changes so made. There are many other things to think about and many other constitutions to, to put into context. And I think that there are going to be a lot more pronouncements around the budget, around revenue mobilization, around um, the Finance Act as we move into um, January and the rest of the month. Um, but then again, the most important thing is how can Nigerians take advantage of these opportunities and um, navigate a very high uncertain year that is largely plagued with a very high cost of living crisis yeah. and uh, big questions around uh, what the electoral result or the election result would mean for policy direction and for stakeholder engagement in the in the in, in the later part of the year. So um, it's going to be an interesting. Um, uh, series of events, you know, um, to look out for as we proceed into the year. And I believe that somewhere around the corner, we'll get to have more clarity around what the Finance Act will be if we're retaining or some if some metrics will be changing. All right, uh, uh, Gospel, let's talk about uh, the inflation, inflationary trend uh, for 2022 as we juxtapose and see uh, what we are out looking for this year. You know, for, uh, from January, uh, inflation jumped from 15.56% in January 2022 to about 21.47% in November. Look at the leap. That's over about uh, 6% uh, in 11 months, thereabout. Uh, although we've not seen the figures for December yet, but let's just project and see. Are we going to continue that particular trend? 
it's very likely that we'll continue in that particular trend because um, the economics of this current inflation that we're dealing with is not really non is not really monetary. You know, um, to a very large extent, they are also very structural. To a very large extent, um, the lot of monies in circulation, which the central bank has been trying to manage with its recent redesign and withdraw policy. Um, there's also been the the climate effect. Or uh, okay, so I mean, let's just see the Russian Ukraine war earlier on in the year, which has impacted on. Um, food and energy prices along the value chain. There's been a, a global climate effect on, on, on food generally in the world today. And that has tripled down, you know, in terms of somewhere around October, November, we saw the flood crisis in Nigeria and the estimations by the FAO that there's a looming food crisis that may lead to an estimated 17 to 34 million Nigerians in poverty in 2023. Uh, so um, this is to tell you that the narrative around the cost of living crisis is evolving which technically would mean inflation because um, the inflationary numbers or the inflationary pressure permits heavily on food and also energy um, um, elements as it were, or what you want to term as the basic basic necessities um, for the average Nigerian. So yes, it's likely going to continue um, because these narratives are still in, in view. and. Uh, but I don't think that using interest rates to curb inflation will be very sustainable. It's necessary, but it may not be sufficient as a measure to managing inflation and also to curbing inflation in the new year. All right. Uh, so, um, humble, um, gospel rather, the 2023 budget is about 4.3% uh, deficit of the, the nation's um, GDP. Analysts believe that this deficit, deficit may lead Nigeria into huge borrowing capable of, uh, capable of um, creating an um, economic setback for the country. Uh, do you agree? I mean, Nigeria has always been boring, so it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not news number one, and um, actually, Nigeria would need to borrow more. It goes on, and that's because of the fundamental root causal challenge of the revenue crisis that we have. You know, that's one, and two, the economy is also not growing enough in terms of capacity you know to generate its own monies you know nigeria actually needs more money to expand as an economy in the real sense even our budget size in the real sense of things is small related to the potential of what we have as a nation and the investments we need to drive you know um, that development that we need as a nation also to state on the other side of things the fact that we've not been able to properly unlock the normal revenue drivers you know in terms of organizing the markets that currently exist and that currently contributes more, you know, because in first half of 2022, we saw that non-oil sector only contributed about 1.1 trillion naira more in oil revenue, um, in, sorry, in revenue than the oil sector, you know, and that's to say that the, the, the quick wins are there, you know, this sector also contributes about 94 to 95% of the Nigerian economy. Services sector alone contributes about 57% to the Nigerian economy. That's to tell you that the low hanging fruits are there, but for some reason, we've not been able to maximize that and there's been a lot of focus around the oil sector and there are so much leakages around the Nigerian economy. So because you have a strong and clear revenue crisis that the political economy, regardless of who is who's in power now, regardless of administration, the political economy have not been able to step up in terms of will to deal, in terms of reforms and all of that, to, to, to properly structure this revenue base to ensure that it's productive and sustainable, there's a likelihood that we'll resort to debt financing for um, to close our debts in the future, sorry, our, our budget deficits in the mm -hmm. future. And again, budget deficits are not necessarily a bad thing. Debts are not necessarily a bad thing. The big question is, what are you borrowing for? for. And are you borrowing to plug into sectors that would um, um, be productive enough to, 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 to set those debts in the mid long term? All right. Uh it is really not a very good uh, outlook, if you ask me. Uh, in the wake of um, all the issues and the long queues and being experienced um, across uh, Lagos and other states, uh, uh, the country is still uh, planning uh, on spending about 3.36 uh, trillion naira on subsidy between uh, January to June this year. What does this really portend in real terms, uh, Gospel? Yeah, um, thank you for asking the question. I mean, I Personally, I do not think that the argument is really subsidy. Um, yeah, government is spending a lot of subsidy. That's very, very, um, uh, it's not sustainable, to be very honest. But then again, if you take out the subsidy, uh, we, we, you can imagine what how much it would cost, you know, to, have, to buy fuel, diesel, and the likes. But that's if the subsidy really, really exists, you know, to start with. Um, so those are different sides of the conversation. 
what I know is that subsidy is not sustainable in any way because it's eating heavily on our revenue block. And um, there are big, there are larger conversations on the table outside subsidy that that lack of ability to address those issues have been reinforcing the need for subsidy. Number one is the fact that I mean, close to 70 to 85 percent of the of, of consumers of PMS are actually households and businesses in Nigeria. So if you fix power by 50 percent, you realize that you know uh, households will have will not have any business going to the filling stations. Um, businesses will have no business going to the, the stations to get fuel and all of that, and which will mean that you will reduce the demand pressure on PMS, all right? And that means technically that you reduce the amount of um, PMS and all of these things you need to import because demand has dropped. And if you reduce the demand, it means that you will not need to pay any subsidy any longer because you're not importing as much as you require. One of the reasons why subsidy is the major issue because you need to import so much because there's high demand for these services or these products in context. So, to be very honest, the, the Nigerian government created its own crisis, and and, and in the main in, in trying to fix those crises or these issues, you're recreating new levels of crisis in context. We could have also fixed the local refineries. Fixing local refineries will relax uh, demand for imported fuel and all of these dynamics. You know, so the big ticket conversation. Even if you remove subsidy, there is a big, there's a huge dependent economy on oil. Um, for consumption in terms of oil consumption, and that may reinvent the wheel of some sort again. If you close our subsidy and push those monies into a government funding program like Shopee during the Jonathan era, the big ticket questions will now be how many Nigerians will have access to Shopee funds for businesses and all of that, for sorry, business development, growth, and all of that, you know. And what would these funds be used for in terms of enabling prosperity or relaxing the cost of living crisis as right. we have today? So uh, these are different legs of conversation that we can look at it from. However, subsidy itself is not a sustainable uh, pathway for the current and the next administration. All right, uh, let's look at um, our nation's um, forex um, regime. It's like a full-blown crisis, if you ask me. Uh, yeah. for, for instance, uh, in January, <laughs> uh, the Naira stood up to the dollar uh, at um, 415 Naira, yeah. official rate, while the black market rate was about 567 Naira. Uh, today, mm -hmm. the situation is worse. The official rate stands at 448.8 uh, mm -hmm. to the dollar, while the black market is about 737 Naira. Mm -hmm. Going forward in 2023, what should we be doing as regards our Forex um, uh, regime? If you don't, um, Nigeria is at a situation, I mean, we're in a situation where um, time has passed and we are now in an emergency state. You know, you need to get back to the basics to fix a lot of these issues we have today. There is no hard and fast tool to fixing anything right now. And um, it's good enough that we are having a new administration coming. And I would expect that the focus should be fixing these structural issues. I mean, come on, it's not going to take anything for you to fix it. And what are these structural issues? You, your economy needs to be more competitive, you know, and in being competitive, that gives you a negotiation power within the international and regional community where a lot of institutional engagements are being done or you know are being carried out you know in terms of currency wars and for or against your currency and um, the nigerian economy itself also needs to be much more productive than it is today you know, mm -hmm. and we also need to consume made in Nigeria to a very large extent as much as we can. All of these things will go a long way to powering up our local economy. Once your local economy is powered up and you're competitive facing regionally and globally, it's a lot easier for your currency to gain value in the scheme of things, you know. And, and all these things I just mentioned are, are the necessary conditions that must happen. And on the on the on the on the, on the sufficient conditions of condition of things would be for us to begin to institutionally manage our currency. Meaning that in the face of the dollar, in the face of the yuan, yen, euro, pound, and all of that, all of that, what negotiations are we having? What policy initiatives are we engaging in to ensure that the Naira is being protected in view of these global shocks? These are important issues that we need to discuss, okay. not some form of um, um, hard and fast rule approach that the central bank is trying to push into the economy right now and is largely reactive in nature and would hurt the economy and the Naira to a very large extent um, as we move into 2023. The current approach is not sustainable and it will further make the Naira devalue in the face of other currencies as we go into the um, um, economy, as we go into the year um, 2023. Let's not also forget that the Q1 elections and the lack of policy direction ahead of the next um, administration is also a big 
um, ticket conversion on the table mm -hmm. that may impact on the value of the currency. And meaningfully, well, you have a highly consumption-driven economy as well. So we hope that the the structural fundamentals will be will be done right at a necessary level. The institutional fundamentals will be done right at a sufficient level. Mm. And at those two levels, the Naira will be in a better position, um, give or take, at the end of 2023, if they are done rightly. All right, there's a whole lot to discuss. Uh, and this is an election year, like we have uh, been saying uh, since uh, we started the show. But I need to set a bit of an agenda right now for whoever wins uh, the election, mm. uh, the presidential election, because there's a whole lot you know, to be yeah. done with the economy, with 33% unemployment rate, uh, mm. insecurity in the Northeast, mm. in the Southeast, and um, Nigerians have um, not been able to even get uh, the average staples to eat. Yeah. What should be the primary focus as it is now for the incoming or the next administration you know, after the mm. elections? Yeah, I would say four things. Number one would be um, the, the issue of insecurity has to be dealt with because, I mean, everything borders on that. If your environment is not safe, you can't be prosperous. You know, there's no amount of policy or anything you want to introduce. If there's a perception of insecurity or <laughs> insecurity itself, mm. those two elements, the perception and the and, and the realistic nature of realistic nature of insecurity mm. would, would, would worsen things further down the line. So there's need to deal with that. Then number two, there's need to uh, take advantage of the low-hanging fruits. Nigeria has a lot of low-hanging fruits. I just talked about non-oil sector, I talked about the oil, the service sector, I talked about a lot of SMEs are actually export ready. You know, I talked about the informal sector. These are low-hanging fruits that we can use to shore up revenue, that we can use to encourage or enable uh, businesses to thrive, you know, in terms of pushing in the right policies and all the likes. So once we deal with the low-hanging fruits, you know, I mean, give or take interdependently, mm -hmm. there's need to also fix the economy, you know, the major drivers. Fixing the low-hanging fruits, closing leakages and all that will encourage more revenue and, you know, um, sort of that push and that drive the economy needs to begin to um, experience newness and some prospects towards prosperity. Mm. Also, will be the need to fix social infrastructure. For social infrastructure, we talk about hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. Hard infrastructure will be all the rails, the road networking, everything we need to get it running, internet and all that, mm. the hard infrastructure. The soft infrastructure will begin to rework the political ideology, the cultural ideology, the behavioral patterns, you know, and the cultural patterns of the people, you know, to ensuring that um, as much as you're fixing the hard things, the culture and the institutions are also geared towards enabling people to thrive. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. So even if you have good infrastructure, if your culture does not enable people to thrive, you know, it will, it will draw people down the ladder and all of that. So okay. um, there's need to look at all these lenses, as, at least as a, from a takeoff standpoint, then begin to deal as we go on and and i believe that if, if you look at it from this context it's a lot easier to drive reform right. and um, scale reforms more sustainably all right gospel as um we round off right now we, sh we cannot go without talking about the cbn policies uh, or policy yeah. direction or policy misdirection as it were uh, as we close mm -hmm. that 2022 we're talking about um, the cashless policy naira redesign yeah. and of course uh, nigerians have to grapple with the fact that they have to you know obtain the new Naira before the end of um, January. But that yeah. doesn't seem to be the case because um, the banks are still paying with the old notes. What do we yeah. do very quickly as we round off gospel? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, the CBN has tried a lot of things, you know, to fix the economy and to fix problems that are not really mon monetary or are not primary its concern. So it sort of positions as though it's firefighting on many grounds. And the policies have been very incoherent, you know. And as a result of that crunch time pressure and all of that on the central bank, we've seen a lot of poor internal controls, you know, within the system. And then that's why you mentioned what you just said right now in, in terms of um, central um, commercial banks still dispensing old notes and the like. So, uh, so a lot of internal controls have to come to the fore to ensuring that this new policy succeeds, you know, and also to ensuring that um, there has to be a lot more consideration next time in terms of rolling out policies. I mean, in the UK, we have a situation where um, due to the um, 
to the loss of the queen, we realize that the new currency, the new power note, has to carry the, the, the king's picture. But that won't be launched till mid-2024. And the goal is for that to co-circulate with currently, currently existing uh, notes that has the queen's picture. So th there has to be a pattern and a plan, you know, mm. and we need to paste things for that, especially in very vulnerable and highly volatile economies that we find ourselves in. Uh, and these are part of the conversation that may worsen inflation as we go on, because there is now a support apply demand pressure around accessing the new notes and withdrawal limits and right. these new policy would not necessarily encourage the cashless economy no it may improve e transactions but nigerians will eat, there's always going to be a rise in cash stack mm -hmm. you know amounts of money that nigerians will want to hold you know um in disposal because they know that there's a limit right, that can draw every month and all of that so we hope that the central bank will be a little bit be, will be more, more considerate all right. and collaborative in its approach in the coming year. All right, thank you so much, um, Gospel, for all the useful insights you have shared to various sectors of the economy. I'm afraid time is never, ever our friend um, when we're talking about uh, yeah. you know, pertinent issues. We do appreciate your time once again. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, uh, Gospel uh, Obele is an economist and uh, he has uh, done uh, justice to all of um, the discuss uh, for today. Uh, Business Insights uh, return again same time next week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching.